How's it going, Critter family? Hope you all are doing well. It's been a couple of weeks since I uploaded a video. Uh, besides yesterday, I just posted one on a positive reinforcement trainer, Colleen McNally. She's amazing. Go check her out. Um, I think she has done amazing work with her German short-haired pointer. Um, and I wanted to show another example of another positive reinforcement trainer and how we start in a controlled environment to teach really strong, good behaviors that we can use in the real world. Other than that, I've just been busy with work and life and the likes and lots of other good stuff, but um, I've been doing much better mentally, so don't worry, I haven't been taking a break because I'm depressed and whatnot, like I think I've said a lot <laughs> in my videos before, but we're doing well. We're doing really, really well. Um, so we're looking at a video by Beckman. Oh, I need these little horses and little, little roosters and a little cow. Um, so he is talking about the training products I love, as in he loves, and don't love. So this will be interesting. He's probably going to love all the ones that I don't love, and I'll probably love the ones that he doesn't love, but we'll see. So if you're ready, if you, if you like him, first of all, go support him, go watch his videos and whatnot, you know, go like his videos and all that, if you like him. If you don't, then don't. If you like my stuff, then you're welcome to like my stuff. If you want to see the video before I break it down, this is the title right here. It's by Beckman's Dog Training. There you go. So, let's get started. A harness. You know what you do with this harness? You take it. And you, and you put it on your dog, <laughs> a properly fitting harness. I love harnesses. I like this design. It looks like it's nice and padded. I like how it goes and it allows free movement of the shoulders. It does have a little traffic handle, which can be helpful, but hopefully it's not overused by people who over control their dogs. Um, I think this looks like a very nice harness. You throw it in the trash. No, I, I don't suggest I that you throw it in the trash. I was walking the aisle of my local Kahoot store and I saw all these products that you guys have been asking me about, so I decided to do a video on it. We're gonna do muzzles, tree bags, clickers, easy walks, harnesses. We're gonna talk about a lot of- This is a muzzle I do not necessarily recommend. I'm sure he's gonna cover it, but this is more of the, the mesh veterinary type muzzle that a lot of times veterinarians um, will use. I don't like them over a basket muzzle, which he may bring up a basket muzzle. Uh, because it's very restrictive on the dog um, and it's it, it, as you can see they can't pant very well they can't take water they can't take treats and the front is open so they can still nip at you and make contact um, so it's just not 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 comfortable and not very safe in my opinion things long leashes a lot of things right now long All lines right. love long lines so first is going to be treat bags i have by far a favorite treat bag and i'm going to tell you but you never it use it I have by far a favorite treat bag. Um, I'll try to post a picture of it here if I remember. Um, there's a couple of them that I like, but but I'm very picky about my treat pouches. But um, but yeah, he has like some stupid chintzy little one that he never even uses. Right now, I don't know why he's bringing treat up treat bags, bags but I love They're treat bags. They're really uncool and dorky looking. So they don't have I'm to be. I'm going to show you the most cool and not dorky looking treat bag okay. there is. Don't worry about the look of it. it it's for if it's for helping you communicate with your dog and train and work with your dog, who cares what you look like, right? I mean, like, I'm not saying that you know you have to go out full fanny pack and whatnot. I mean, I tell people, join the fanny pack club. It doesn't look like a fanny club, fanny pack. You know, it, you can put your own belt on it. You can put whatever. But they're there. They, you can hold a bunch of stuff in it. You know, your treats. You can hold, like, I hold my business cards in there. A bunch of different clickers. Um, potty bags. You can hold your phone. All sorts of things, you know? Um, it's like a it's like a purse for a dog trainer who doesn't wear a purse um, <laughs> and easy access. So I'm all for it, um, and I don't care how it looks. I've gotten over that over the years. What is I'm this? I'm not one? shallow. Outward hound. Okay, look at this thing. Look at this thing. Sticks out. Look how far this thing sticks out. Yeah. Look how uncool this. That's creep that, that that he's so silly for trying to make people think they need to look cool and and whatnot. Who cares? You're training your dog. Your dog doesn't care what you look like. Thank, thank the Lord that they don't care what we look like. And you don't need to worry about what other people think. This is not a fashion show. We are here to work with an animal. I don't care what I look like. My treat pouch is bigger and bulkier than probably a lot of people like, but I can hold a lot of items in it that are important to me when working with clients and dogs. Bag is. Okay. All treat bags do is hold treats. So no, actually they, that... they don't just hold treats a lot of them do only hold treats a lot of them don't like i explained earlier it looks really dorky that's that one here's my favorite one the one that you my never use one is treat tote 
right there. This is the one you see in all my videos. See this thing right here? This thing makes it hang down a little bit farther. So it doesn't, so it looks better. Look at that. It that looks, looks exactly the it. same. It's just lower on your body. It's literally no different than the other one. The other one is actually just a larger size. You can open it further. Um, it has a little rounded part. I'm sure it's easier, you know, just as easy to wash. Um, it has this little part that you can flip over. It might have that magnetic snap on it. Um, some tree pouches have those and I don't know. I'm kind of iffy. I haven't used one with that, that snapping feature to close it. Um, I haven't worked with one long enough because, you know, it would be handy to close in case the dog's trying to get into your treat pouch. Um, but I also, it's also more difficult for me to have my timing down to open it up again and get a treat out, you know, but I can load my hand. That's, that's neither here nor there. If you like those and, you know, say you're, you're working with clients or you're talking to someone for a while, you can close your treat pouch. And then when you're ready to train again, you can open it up again. Um, and you can close it like that with that magnet. Well, I don't know if it's a magnet, but it's like a, a snapping mechanism. Um, you can do that for storage. So that might be very helpful. Or they this also one. have the drawstring type. Look how giant this one is. And it still it has, That one to... has the, the um, closing metal strip in there. It's not magnetic, but it's, it's a snap. You know, like those, those uh, bracelets that you would slap on your hand. Those slap bracelets that would roll around. Um, I'm aging myself probably if anybody knows what those <laughs> what those are I'll try to put a picture up here, but um, yeah, I'm fine with that. Too high. Look at this. So who cares? Too much. This one also has it looks like a little pouch on the front You can put other things in like your clicker your your potty pouch uh, potty bags You know, maybe some business cards or or stickers for the little ones. I don't know keys Too much this thing is that's like the, the size the minimum with... size that that's not nerdy at all you know join if it is then join the nerd club you know be nerdy <laughs> i think it's awesome um this is the minimum size that i would use i like how it's deep you can hold a lot of treats um you can hold uh if you're using balls you can hold multiple tennis balls in there or toys um this is you know what i use and but this is what it looks like on me i mean i don't care anything i've ever seen treat tote is my favorite one all right treat tote Looks Maybe like put them back on the shelf and don't just bag. throw them on the ground right. like that. I know it's not on the ground, but like you could put it back on the shelf. Here's a clicker. What does a clicker do, guys? Marks the correct behavior. That's not my favorite type of clicker. Um, however, you know, funny enough, that's the first one I ever got. Um, I don't know, just the way the sound is and, and just the shape of it. Um, I prefer the type that you can, they have a little strap you can put over your finger. So it's like free floating. Um, you know, you can, you can snap it and it has a certain specific sound. Um, you don't have to. I'll show you everything that, that's in my treat pouch um, after this video so we can compare. Uh, but they have some that you can wrap around your wrist that has like a little little bungee cord um, that hangs from the clicker so you can drop it. You can hang it from your wrist, whatever. But um, I mean, clickers are figure. awesome. There's then different types of clickers. The behavior later on. It's a marker. It's a bridge. It bridges the gap in time between the behavior and the reinforcement. So, you know, but you don't want to know what you do with this. You throw it in the trash. Why? Why? I mean, you come from training whales, which doesn't do daily squat anyway. The clicker is a great thing, or you can use a marker word such as yes, good, I don't know, pot pie, whatever you want. Just make sure it is short and it is consistent and you use it every time. The difference between using a marker word and the clicker is the clicker is the same consistent sound every single time. You can click it 50 times and it's not going to change in frequency, in the, you know, the loudness, the the sound, the tone, your voice, yes, can be more excited. It can be higher. It can be lower. It can be a different volume. It can change. So either way, if your dog is really good and you're good with timing, you can use the verbal word. A lot of times people are not quick enough to get the verbal word out to say yes. Um, you know, so they might use a clicker. I like both, but with the clicker, eventually you fade away from it or you can, you don't have to. Most of the time you fade away from the clicker when the behavior is um, already learned. This one is interesting. I've seen these, I've never used one, a multi-clicker, multi-click. Like one is a one, a single click. And the other one I think is like a, a multiple, like a maybe a triple click that you can use as maybe for a jackpot reward. I don't know, I've never, never, you know, wanted to spend $20 on one to find out, but maybe I will, who knows? You already have a marker, it's called your voice. I use yes when you're training it down and the 
dog's body touches the ground, you say yes, you open your hand, and you feed them. My neck. What muzzle do you use? I use Baskerville muzzle. Yeah, I mean, I'll use a Baskerville muzzle. I'll use a basket muzzle. Sometimes I like to pad them out. Um, I don't just use this brand. Um, you know, there's a lot of great brands that you can get on um, Etsy or other smaller creator stores in there. They have some made out of neoprene. They have some great stores that, that make it, um, you know, lots of adjustments for, you know, specific breeds of dogs. Bully breeds, um, you know, dogs that have that, that flat face, that, that, um, a trachecephalic, um, you know, like French bulldogs and English bulldogs or dogs with shorter muzzles. Um, yeah, I'm all for a basket muzzle. I just like them. I think they're good. They're soft. The dog can drink out of them. Yeah. I like them way better than these mesh muzzles. Agreed. I'm a Baskerville, Baskerville muzzle fan. That's the muzzle that you see in all my videos and you always ask me about. So that's the one. What else we got? Long leashes. How many times have I told you 20 foot leash for recall? It's the middle of the road between the dog on the leash and the dog off leash. Yeah, can I love long lines. I mean, I love a good long line. I have a couple, I've given some to clients. I have a couple nylon long lines, but I'm actually becoming more and more of a fan of the neoprene or or the biothane, whatever, whichever one it is. Um, like the, the fake leather, it looks like rubber, but it's not um, type leashes because you get you know better grip with it you don't get the rope burn when it is wet it's a little bit more difficult to work with and that's where the handy dandy nylon long line can come from but um but yeah i mean i'm for either one there and they're also easier to clean the other type the biothane neoprene i guess biothane i don't know whatever you want to call it <laughs> um they are easy to clean and, and disinfect and whatnot Brain with a 20 foot leash dog gets to 15 feet you say come dog goes no way I'm, I'm not on a leash, I'm 15 feet away from you. Then they hit the end of the leash, then they come to you, then you give them a treat. That's not how I teach recall. That's not how I recommend anybody teach recall. But again, if you like him and you want to follow him, then do that. Go clothesline your dog and cause damage to their trachea or their, their chest plate and body. Um, if your dog is at, the end, is at 15 feet of their 20 foot leash and it's loose on the ground and they think that they're off leash and they say no way, then you're not anywhere near ready for them to be off leash or and you need to do a lot more work on the long line without having to rely on them getting to the end of it and and popping them because guess what when they're off leash they know they're off leash and they know that you can't get them and pop them so 20 foot leashes are i mean i have middle i have six foot leashes i have a 10 foot leash i have a 15 foot a 20 foot a 30 foot and a 50 foot you know that was i use them all the time with my shiba adonis bless his little soul um, they were amazing. You know, I love to go on little adventures for him. He was never reliable off leash because I didn't take the time to make him off leash. I, as the human and owner, didn't take the time to teach him to be reliable. So we just went on a 20 foot, you know, or 30 foot long line and we were, we were, we made sure to stay respectable. Meaning I made sure to pull in the leash when I was ever around other people or in other parks where it was a little bit busier. But when we were outside of that, then I would let him go slide the leash out of my hand. You know, of course, I was holding on to it. You develop feel, you take in the leash, you let out the leash. Uh, do some practice before you just go out with a 20-foot leash on your dog. Below the road or the intermedi intermediary step between your dog off leash and your dog on leash. Uh, yeah, okay. I agree, but not, not okay. with the technique he's talking about. Okay. You know what I like, think about these, right? I think this is something that you should take and throw in the trash, honestly. Gentle eaters, your dog doesn't need them. The way he uses them is absolutely abusive and abhorrent and just absolutely disgraceful and dangerous. Gentle eaters, I love them. I love gentle eaters. Here's the thing with gentle eaters. I'm not gonna get into a gentle leader or head harness. Any head harness is fine. You don't have to do gentle leaders. Any head harness is I think fine. Halty has halting. one. Yeah. There's a bunch of them out there. I don't know if they have any of those. Medi size medium fits. <clears throat> almost all big dogs. You don't need a size large. You're like, I have an 80 pound uh, German Shepherd. Size. So that probably means it's gonna be very uncomfortable on the dog if you have a medium on a very large dog. Um, regardless, he probably wants it tight. The way he teaches is not at all the way the company ever recommends that you use it. So I don't, 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 I just don't recommend using it at all, but especially not the way he demonstrates. 
He lets the dog get to the end of the leash. Not even then. He just pops and pulls. And that's why he likes it because he has leverage on the animal's face. The reason why they're dangerous alone is if the animal runs and gets caught on something, they can break their neck. They can you know, cause a spinal injury. They can sprain a muscle. Um, you know, they can hurt their face or their eye. It's just not, not good. Medium fits them. You don't need large. Larges, they hang down too small. Size medium. You know how I feel about them. I haven't talked too much about easy walk harnesses. I'm not a fan of them because they restrict the shoulder movement and that's how they, they stop the dog from pulling is they're just twisting the dog around or they're keeping their shoulders from, sorry, they're keeping their shoulders from moving freely. It's like putting you know, a rubber band or one of those exercise bands around here and you're only able to get so far. Put it around your legs and you can't walk as well. And that's how those work. I really dislike them. Um, they're very, very popular. They do work. All of these tools work. They do, you know, but it's how they work and if they're necessary. These work to slow a dog down, but long term it can affect their gait and their skeletal structure. You know, they, they can have joint issues and whatnot. So this doesn't actually teach your dog what to do. It just holds them back and keeps them from, from being able to walk freely. That's why you need to teach your dog not to pull. Uh, the other harness that he showed does not promote pulling. It just makes it more comfortable and easy for the dog to keep walking. Pulling is a learned behavior. So if your dog keeps pulling you everywhere and gets to sniff everywhere that they pull or finds food everywhere that they pull, that's because you've allowed that to happen. Whether because the dog outweighs you or whatever, you're, you're in too distracting of an area, you need to work on teaching the dog not to pull. There's a number of different ways you can do it. I always leave a, a loose leash tutorial in the description below of how I taught my Shiba to pull and how I teach every client to work with that. This is, these are really good. They're not as effective as gentle leaders. They connect in the chest. When the dog pulls, it just pulls them a little bit differently. It Better twists them around. a harness that no. connects in the front. Better than a collar. Also a lot of harnesses that he just showed, the, the big one, the, the first one he showed, they also have a front clip as well. I'm more okay with that if you have a dog that overpowers you, but I prefer the harness that looks like this, um, which he's probably gonna come to next. So I prefer a harness like this, and a lot of times they do have the clip on the front. I don't rely on that clip, but if some people need a little extra help while they're teaching their dog, then that gives them a little extra leverage. Color, but not as good as a gentle leader. But an easy walk harness is good. A harness, you know what you do with this harness? You take it. Oh look, I love the green color. I'm a big trash, fan of green. Because it is a pulling device. No, it's you, not. This, these are great for sled dogs. Makes it so... It's great for dogs that, that have tracheal damage and any dog on the planet. That's not even an appropriate harness for sled dogs because it would dig into their throat too much. They have specific harnesses for sled dogs. These do not promote pulling. They just make it easier to pull. The dog was, I've seen many people pull, dogs pulling this, pulling that, pulling every other tool that he's had here, choking themselves on a choke chain, choking themselves on a prong collar where they have a collapsed trachea. My Sheba pulled on a prong collar when I didn't know anything and I listened to stupid trainers just like him and even worse and the prong collar damaged his trachea. Towards the end of his life, he had, you know, a collapsing trachea. At first he had damage to it, over the years, it got worse and worse. That was not the end of his, that was not the, the you know, undoing of him. It was um, kidney failure, but um, Comfortable that's to a pull, different story. But that's not what you want. And all these husky people. Well, I'd rather my dog be comfortable. I mean, I don't want them to pull, but I'd rather them be comfortable to pull and I can teach them not to pull than to be uncomfortable and not pulling. Because then if they're uncomfortable, they're not learning diddly squat. They're just being held back. And so when you put them in any other tool, they're going to pull. So you have to rely on these tools here and you never get away from them. These are all a crutch. A regular collar and a regular harness should be your everyday go-to. If your dog is fine and a collar, then use a nice wide collar um, that has a lot more surface area versus, you know, something super thin like this around this dog's neck if they pull really hard. They come to me and they all have harnesses. For some reason, they think because they have a husky, the husky needs to wear a harness. And no, they because why... they have a dog. They think the dog would be more comfortable in a harness. They don't want the dog choking themselves and causing collapsed trachea. Like I'm sure he causes many on the dogs he works with. They don't want their dog to be choking themselves. So they put them in a harness because it's safer. And you don't know how to train in a harness. I do. So. Their dog is pulling. 
It's because you have your dog in a pulling device. No, you don't. Not in. It's because you haven't taught them not to pull. Because you haven't been abusive and trying to break your dog's neck and their face the way he does with these these tools. And these are yeah anti pulling, but guess what? They're 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 basically anti dog, anti future learning. That's all it is. You're gonna rely on these tools the rest of the dog's life. And the rest of your life, if you don't learn how to teach your dog to be able to walk in a harness on a loose leash without having to worry about anything. Pulling device. A actual pulling device. These are these are horrible. Harnesses, back clip harnesses are horrible. That's my oh, favorite thing to all teach right, in. Here, we got some leashes. I'm not gonna make I teach people all the time. Reactive dogs. Not reactive dogs. Pulling, you know. I will teach them to walk in a harness that clips in the back. Yes, in the back. And they all say, wow, no way. I show them and the dog is, is walking nice and soft because I give the dog a little bit more of their leash. I'm not holding them back. I'm not basically holding them by the collar. I'm not, I'm not in a fight with the dog. I give them room to breathe and move. And the dog says, oh, I feel less of the opposition reflex kicking in. I don't want to run. I'm not trying to fight this pressure. I'm actually able to walk and breathe this whole leash talk Le leather leashes i am not a fan of leather leather leashes and people print bring their dogs to me with le leather leashes all the time you know why they snap i've had no so many... very poor poorly made leather leashes snap um i have a really good leather leash i've had for going on now 13 years um it's actually now in storage since i you know don't have adonis but um but when he you know i had it for about you know 12 years of his life um and the only reason i had it because uh i started out with nylon leashes but i really don't like nylon leashes because they they you know, when you're working with a dog it can pull and they give you rope burn um i like leather leashes not because i pop and yank and crank the dog but because i do have good grip and it lasts a long time you know you if, if you don't have a dog that's that you don't put it on a puppy necessarily you know or they're gonna chew right through it because it's like leather you know it's it's like cow hide um it's like a raw hide um but they last forever if you take care of them they have good grip they it, it's the one leash that i've had for him uh, aside from the long lines that are you know, made of some nylon material and some neoprene or biothane i'll just say biothane um some biothane you know material but for me, the reason why I got the, it was like 50, $50 at the time, you know, when I got my leather leash, like 12 years ago, it'd probably be a hundred dollars over now with inflation. Um, or maybe like 75, I don't know, but I got a regular six foot leather leash because it was required by the trainers at, uh, the dog training school that I went to when, you know, before I found a pet smart trainer that turned everything around, go pet smart trainer. Um, I believe her name is Stephanie and she had a German shepherd named Jessica um, but they were very, very nice and they helped me a lot as well as Eddie, Eddie, shout out to Eddie. He also was really, really helpful too. Um, pet smart trainers. But before that, I went to a training school that required, they took off the harness because they were like him and they said, oh, this caused the dog to pull. So they put me immediately on a choke chain, um, and a leather, and they required a leather leash. Uh, so that's another, you know, at the time, like $75 down the drain. Um, and then we upgraded to the prong collar which again, made things worse with the leather leash. Um, and then after that, I said, screw that. So I kept the leather leash. I, I love it. I'm personally just a fan. I'm old school because it's nice and strong. It doesn't give you rope burn. You have good grip. If you do have a dog that pulls, um, you know, it, it's, it's not gonna, it's not thin and flimsy. Yeah. Anyway, that's just my, my thoughts on it. Um, but not every leash is the same. So I would say if you're going to get a leather leash, get a good quality one leashes they don't snap when they're brand new but once they get older these things snap right in if half. you leave them out in the sun and you let them fray and you let them get old and unconditioned and dried out then yeah they will absolutely snap but the one that i've had i kept it indoors for 12 13 years and i took that was the only leash i used with adonis you know again the, the only main six foot leash that i use with him and it, it's it's still like brand new you know, it's, it's totally fine. There's no, no risk of it snapping. So if you take care of it again, it'll take you care of you. You cannot walk your aggressive or your leash reactive dog if you think or possibly your leash is going to snap. 
So well, and get a new leash. In my opinion, after about you six months, are no no. You got to replace them all the time. So that's that. That's absolutely nonsense. Like I I just said, I've had this leash that's now been in my closet for a year, um, but for twelve years it went outside in the rain. It went out in the beaches. It got wet. It went out in the snow. It went out in the beating sun. And it's perfectly fine. And I'll show that in, in the, the end of this video with all the other tools that I use regularly. Oh, I am not like a lot of trainers anti whatever this thing's called, a retractable leash. You know, I'm, I'm but kind of the they're same always with tight. him. You know how I feel about tight leashes. Look at this. They're yeah. always a little bit tight. So the dog always feels a little bit of tightness. And Pressure. you know how I feel about that. If you want to use this thing and lock it out, that's fine. And use it like a normal leash. But don't have this thing retracting all the time because the dog's learning and being comfortable and rehearsing behavior on a tight leash. So I will agree with him to a degree on this um, that I I used to hate them. I don't now when you have a trained dog. I really like these. Um, I have one that's, I think, 18 feet. Um, or maybe it's long. I think it's actually longer than that. It's eight, it's eight meters. However, I think that's, what, 26 feet or something. Um I don't know, I'm bad with math, but it's eight meters. Um, and I love it because when I have a dog that's transitioning from the long line, you know, to off leash or being more, um, or working with a long line and off leash and training and all that, then I use a retractable light. I reel it out and then I'll lock it just like he says. And then I'll let it just kind of float in the air, float, hang on the ground. And they can, the dog can, you know, kind of um, simulate being off leash. With Adonis, because he was so sensitive, when he felt the tension on a retractable, on his the back of his harness, he wouldn't move because he thought that tension alone, even from three feet away, he thought he was stuck. And so when he feels tension on the leash, he stops walking and he just sits there and waits for me to help him or he waits for it to be loose again like this and then we can move on. So a lot of times I would reel it out, lock it, and then we would walk like that. For dogs that are in training, I don't think they're a good idea. I think they're very dangerous because it's too hard to you know control the mechanic. Um, you know, I'm old school, so I like to use the feel of the leash, you know, go up, slide up and down the leash and take grip, uh, take slack, bring it in or let it out or, you know, stuff like that. So... Um, if you have a new dog that's using it, I don't recommend it, but some people are more comfortable with this because they use it all the time. Do whatever you're most comfortable with, but just be aware, um, that these are more likely to snap than a leather leash. You know, these are, wow, this isn't even sewn all the way down. I mean, that's a chintzy, that's a really crappy leather leash. No wonder they, you know, he says they break every six months, but, um, these are much more likely to snap than a leather leash will. What would another example of rehearsing behavior on a tight leash be called? And Pulling. these things can also, if you if you unsnap it or you drop it and it goes and the dog is dragging it, the dog's going to be dragging it forever. It's chasing the dog. It's scary. Um, these can snap and hurt yourself. Um, I've had one of these, you know, I let go accidentally and the, the hook of it or the clip came back and hit my hand. Very painful. You don't want tight tight leash ever. All right, and I agree that, that is my walk around. That it does teach the dog to ignore that pressure. When I teach a dog to give into pressure, I want them to learn that means something. Hence why Adonis wouldn't walk on a retractable unless I reeled it out and locked it for him in a loose position. Found at Cahoots, one of the aisles that I interests me because there are so many dog training things on here. That's all I see. Prong collars. I'm not anti prong collar. I've I am about that. absolutely. They're just, I, I'm a gentle head harness guy. Not that, a... that doesn't mean he's any more gentle. He's just as abusive. In fact, a prong collar would be less aggressive and abusive on a dog. It would be more gentle with his method than using a gentle leader. And the word gentle and the word pinch collar and the word this and that, I think all of this is just nonsense. We got a slip lead. I don't like the corded kind because it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's like this into the dog's neck versus something that's wide. It's still going to be pressing into the dog's neck, but it's not like, I don't like, I think slip leads are far too overdone. Prong collar guy. All right, that's it. That's my opinion on a lot of things that you guys have asked me about that I've never addressed. I happen to be in the aisle, see all this stuff. So I decided to come back in and make a video for you. 
So that's that. That's what he thinks. If you like him and you want to support him and all that, then go for it. If you want to see other videos of his, go for it. I don't care. Um, but yeah, the, the thing I like most about this is this, um, this little harness right here. The harness I think is great and a nice quality leather leash or just another padded, you know, leash that has a little bit more grip than just the nylon. Um, or a neoprene, uh, sorry, biothane leash. Biothanes are, are, are my new favorite because they're a lot more affordable than like a leather leash. And it's, um, it's not animal product as far as I know. So anyway, that was my thoughts on this video. Hope you all are doing well. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Go say howdy do to all your little critters. Say howdy do for me. Give them some kind of love and they appreciate. Until next time, practice peace, patience, and positivity. Bye. Okay, so here we are. Don't mind the hairy car. Um, just part of the business. So here is the treat pouch that I use. Sorry if it's a little bit noisy. I'm filming outside. But this is the treat pouch I use, generally. Got my little stickers on there. You got some, you got a pocket on the front. You have your clicker. This is a clicker you can put on your wrist. As well as your finger. That's the kind of noise it makes. I like it because it's light. You can drop it, hang on to it. That's usually what I have in there. I have some other clickers in here too, just for extra. What else do we got in here? This one I just put on this little carabiner. This is usually what I use. It just hangs on to your finger. You can take it off the carabiner. Same noise. Nice and light compared to that one. Um, got your little baggies in here. Has a nice zipper on this side. Keep your cards in there. Other stickers if you want. The inside, nice and wide, easy to get to. Um, it is magnetic. So it closes in not super strong magnet, but it's strong enough to keep it closed if you want. We have an extra little pocket right in here. If you want to keep different treats, sometimes I'll keep my cards in there, but they get covered in treats. This is another type that I have. Um, this actually came with this clicker and another clicker. So we got this nice pouch in here. This is actually not a bad, uh, not a bad uh, training pouch either. I just prefer this one. I've used it longer, so I'm used to it. Has a nice big, wide open little mesh basket there for your clickers and whatnot. You can put your keys in there. You can put your phone in here if you want inside of this. Zips up. It has these two little rings. So if you wanted to, just like this guy here has these two little rings, you can put a little uh, satchel around it or a little, you know, clip. You can clip a belt or something around it so that way you can hang it around your shoulder, you know, like a handbag or, or a fanny pack. Got a nice big wide open area here for lots of treats. Has a little drawstring right here. As they both have a spot for a you know belt it has a clip this one originally did have a clip but it was plastic which is the one downside to this it's by doggone good company um, is it broke but it does have this nice wide spot here for a belt which I do appreciate this one also has room for some headphones if you wanted another little pouch in the back here that you can put your phone in um, if your phone is small enough or some cards or some other things so if this had this metal clip on it, I would say it'd be perfect. You know, we'd be set. Um, this here is from Barky, and this one is from Doggone Good, um, from doggonegood.com, I believe. I got this one from the shelter I worked with um, in Texas. When I volunteered in Texas, we had to, you know, you have to have a, sp a specific number to order. So I think we ordered like 25 or 50 of them, um, and they all get shipped out at once. But this, I've had it since. You know, I've had it for probably eight or nine years now, um, and it's great. It's my favorite pouch so far. Um, this is a close second. I'm just getting used to using the drawstring, you know, having the different pockets in the different places compared to this one. But, yeah, so this is my favorite type of clicker to use. You know, sits on your finger just like this one. This one just has it on the, has an extra wrist. Um, a bobber. You can take it off of there if you want to. So, yeah, these are the types of pouches I use. And clearly they are not just for carrying treats, as you can see, all the other junk that I carry with mine. Um, they have pouches for a number of different 
um, items that you can carry with you. So this is just what I carry in mine. So thanks for watching, everyone.